Hi friends, it is already the middle of August. I don't know how that happened. Um, some months seem to go slower than others, like July seemed to have been a very slow month for me, but so far I feel like August is a month that I have blinked and I'm like, oh wow, it's already the middle of August, which means that it is time for me to actually share with you some empties. I started doing a twice a month empties series here on my channel just a couple of months ago. Up until that point, I was only doing my empties videos at the end of every month. However, I am getting through a lot of candles and I felt like if I split it up into two videos over the month that I could give you a little bit more I, I would say more in-depth thoughts about each candle that I am talking about. A lot of you guys said that you really enjoyed the twice a month format, so we're continuing on with it. So today I have, how many candles have I finished up here? I wanna say it's like 10 or 11 candles that I have already finished burning here in the month of August. Quite a few of these are actually still available, so I think it's great that, um, I finished it up and can give you some feedback in case you have had your eye on any of these candles. Um, but as we all know, I tend to like to talk. I don't want my video to be forever long. So I do want to just very quickly say hi to any new viewers. Um, my name is Katie. I love to talk all things candles here on my channel. I do empties videos like this, hauls, dedicated reviews, and everything in between. So if you like candle content, if you like you know what I'm doing here, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. And again, if you like this video, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It helps me out with the old YouTube algorithm. All of the candles that I am talking about today will be listed and linked in the description box down below, as well as with any affiliate codes that I have. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and talk about them. So the first candle that I wanted to talk about is a Homeworks candle. And um, I also did do, did I do a dedicated review on this? Yes, I did. If I have dedicated reviews on them, which most of these I think I do, those will be listed below too if you want like further thoughts. Um, but this candle is Salted Caramel Gelato. Fragrance notes on this candle are salted caramel, honeyed nuts, buttered toffee, dark brown sugar. The pour date on this specific candle is December 19th of 2023. Now this one you're going to see, oh my goodness, here we go, Greg, all about candles. Guess what I caught? A big what is that? Like, it's not a moth, is it? I don't know. Oh, goodness. All right. So uh, he and I have this running joke back and forth when we talk about our candles, because he and I, um, what we do sometimes is when I know for me personally, when I am usually on the very last burn of a candle, um, or I'm just ready to kind of like, I want to say move on from it, but it's the last burn. Those final burns, particularly on these homeworks, usually you're not getting a ton of fragrance out of them. So I'll usually move it outside so that way I can go ahead and start, you know, bringing something else new into my collection to burn. So this one, that is how I caught a, a bug. This was burning out on my back porch here. I actually have a nice little like covered area where we have a really nice table out there. And so sometimes I will actually burn candles outside. All right. So you can see that this candle, despite catching this bug, um, did burn clean all the way down. Um, good, good, solid performance out of this candle. I did do a dedicated review on this one. And I did talk about how this fragrance to me, I wish that there was a little bit more creaminess to this. Um, it's definitely like what the notes that I picked up the most was kind of like this caramel glaze that you see all throughout the gelato here. Um, I personally really like the salted caramel cake candle um, a little bit better than this one. This will not be a repurchase for me, but it did pair really nicely. Um, if you have this in your collection, it pairs really nicely with a lot of like the apple fragrances that are starting to come into a lot of our, those of us who are seasonal burners, a lot of us I think are starting to gravitate towards some apple scents as we start to approach the fall season and this one did pair nicely with it um solid performance i would say um i can't remember what i ranked this one at it was around like a seven i would say in terms of like six to seven in terms of strength and throw not a powerhouse but definitely a noticeable fragrance but it's not going to be a repurchase for me another fragrance that i actually finished up from gosh i started burning this a few months ago put it away and brought it back out this is roasted sesame from bath and body works the fragrance notes on here are roasted sesame toasted hazelnut sweet maple now this one again burned kind of all the way down so I did have a backup of this candle and I did actually take it back into Bath and Body Works and exchanged it out for another fragrance. 
I like this scent. Um, there are elements about it that kind of reminds me of uh, Kringle Candle Reserve Sweet and Savory. It's more of like the savory element. There's no sweetness. Well, there is sweetness like in terms of the maple, but it's not the same as that candle. And I thought, oh, I might like burning them side by side. But I think when I brought this candle back out again to burn it, I was like, I don't really love this. Like I like it, but I didn't love it as much as I, as like I recalled liking it at first. I don't know why that is. Um, yeah, there's, um, uh, there's been a lot of talk about this one. I do have a dedicated review on it. You, I don't think you can purchase it anymore unless it comes back for like semi-annual sale in the winter time, but it's a nice fragrance. It's, uh, it's savory. Um, I know that there was talk that this is a repackage of the pumpkin peanut brittle. Some people, I don't remember the exact fragrance. Um, some people say, yes, it is. Other people say, no, it's not. I never had that candle, so I can't take a side either way on that. But again, it's more of a savory fragrance with a little bit of maple in the background. Um, you definitely get like a toasted nuttiness, which would be the sesame I'm assuming in there. But yeah, that one I finished up. Another candle that I finished burning is Country Candle Limited Edition. This was Blood Orange. So this was one of their fragrances from the Summer Limited Edition collection. And you can see that it, I mean, it went, it went pretty far down there. Now you do see a little bit of soot accumulating there at the, you know, around the rim. I've talked about that. I think that that is actually a design feature of these uh, more like apothecary style of jars. These are an homage to the Yankee candle days that the Kittredge family um, is associated with. But um, I think by nature, if as the candles start to burn lower, you know, as they start to burn out, I should say, um, the, this is going to catch some soot as they get lower. There's a little bit more soot and it's going to catch the soot. Um, but I have one candle here that got really, really sooty, but this one, it it got like somewhat, I guess. Uh, the flames were really, or the flames, the wicks on these were really good all the way down. Um, I didn't really have a whole lot of issues with these. I, I am pretty confident that Country Candle has figured out the wick situation on their, um, on their candles. I know that once they switched over to the 100% soy formula, um, they kind of were running into some challenges with getting the wicks just right to adapt from being a paraffin formula to the soy wax formula. But this fragrance was really nice. Do I think that it was a completely authentic, like, I don't wanna say not a new fragrance. Um, I should read the fragrance notes for you. Orange, juicy fruit, grapefruit, lemon, lemonade. This fragrance reminds me in some ways to their Essentials candle, which is a take on like the, um, what is it? Capri Blue Volcano, Yankees Iceberry Lemonade, Bath and Body Works Sunwash Citrus. It's in that vein because I do pick up on the grapefruit in here. I don't think it's a repackage, but I do think it's a cousin to those types of candles. So if you like that fragrance, you would probably like this one. Um, but I will still say that my favorite orange fragrance so far from Kringle for the summertime um, is their reserve orange fragrance. That's just a very robust, juicy orange. And then in the winter time, I really love their Away in a Manger. That's probably my favorite orange fragrance from Kringle. I'm setting these down on the carpet so that way I'm not, um, you know, making too much noise shuffling around here. All right, let's talk about a candle that I purchased from Christmas in July. I purchased this in a duo from QVC. This is Vanilla Marshmallow Cookie. The fragrance notes on here are vanilla bean, marshmallow, sugar cookie, caramel swirl, and spices. This has a pour date of April 25th, 2024 on it. And you can see, again, it burned pretty well all the way down. It didn't go all the way down like um, some other Homeworks candles do, but it burned pretty well for me. Now, this candle, I will tell you that it is... Um, I, as it burned more and more, like as it got further down, I did do a dedicated review on this. And I can't remember if in that review that I made the comparison. Honestly, you guys, I do so many candle reviews that sometimes the wires just get crossed in my head. And I'm like, did I mention that? I can't remember if I did. Like I said, there's a dedicated review on this. So you can go back and reference it if you would like. But um, this candle, you do smell that caramel note in here the more that this candle burns. And I actually noticed that similarity. This has, a, or this candle has that fact in common with the birthday cake candle. Um, in fact, as this got 
like I said, lower down in the wax pool as we got closer to emptying this candle. I did detect that caramel note upon burn more so, you know, like I said, towards the later half of this candle's life than I did in the beginning. So um, I, I don't see myself needing backups of this candle, but do I like it? Yes, I do. Am I going to get rid of the other one? No, I will keep it. I actually think that this fragrance will go really nicely with a lot of tree fragrances that will be coming up here in, pretty much in the blink of an eye. You guys be prepared. You guys, I have a feeling Christmas stuff will be launching in September. I mean, obviously this was Christmas in July, but like just they're like unapologetically probably going to start shoving Christmas on us in September. Um, but I think that this would go really nicely with a, with a tree note. But also, despite the packaging on this, the packaging was beautiful when it was lit up. I will say that I think that uh, the fragrance in and of itself is great year round. If you're like a, a good gourmand loving type of person, you're going to like this fragrance probably year round. Um, so you can always remove the label if you want to. But yeah, it's a nice fragrance. Do I need backups of it? No. Similarities, you guys, to Birthday Cake, which I love that fragrance from Homeworks. Um, I would say that it's a distant cousin now that I've finished this up in terms of performance and in terms of the fragrance itself. Um, that is a fragrance that I would compare it to from homework. Put that down. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about a Kringle Candle Reserve that I finished burning. This I did receive in PR. This is Caramel Cocoa and Toasted Fluff. This was part of, I think, their Summer Reserve launch. Fragrance notes here are caramel, chocolate, marshmallow, vanilla cream, caramel sweet. Okay, so I have made it no secret that caramel fragrances are not always my favorite. And in particular, even though I am a brand ambassador for Kringle, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't always like the way that they do caramel. It could come across a little bit scorched to my nose. I will tell you that while I did detect some of that caramel note in this, in this candle, um, I definitely smelled it more of the cocoa in here it came across as like a very rich cocoa note in here and there is a little bit of marshmallow fluff in the background now would i have liked to have seen more of a marshmallow note in here maybe to um i i want to say like maybe tone down the richness of this candle yes but that being said the fragrance on this candle was very authentic to what you see pictured on this label here it's very rich very decadent um chocolate caramel um dessert well it's not a dessert but honestly let's be real if you're if you're consuming that that should be a dessert you guys like the amount of calories in that i'm sure it tastes delicious but oh you got to have a sweet tooth too um to consume that as we've come to know and expect with a lot of kringle candles this burned well all the way down um I, after i stick my nose in candles i'm like maybe i should make sure i don't have any kind of like soot on my nose um but no, burned well all the way down. This reserve launch, I did have to trim the wicks every time because the wicks could get a little wild and crazy. Um, the, the only thing that I will notice on this one, I did have some variances in terms of the strength and throw, depending on where I was at in the candle. So when I reviewed this candle, it was still pretty strong for me. But I did notice when I hit that halfway point on this candle, the strength and throw did diminish quite a bit. I would say it went down to like maybe a six. Um, and then it picked back up at the end. So just be aware sometimes in these large format candles with Kringle and Country, that is a pattern that I have started to really like connect the dots and notice over some time now is that usually when I hit the halfway point on these candles, I run into like a pocket where um, things just are not per performing as well in terms of the strength and throw. Um, but the beginning and the ends of these tend to be uh, tend to be pretty good. So I don't think I will be repurchasing this candle. It was, a, I'm glad that they sent it to me in PR. I'm always grateful when they send me things, but it is not going to be a repurchase for me. Let's talk about a candle that I did repurchase. And this is one that I had last year and I actually repurchased it this year. So that way I could do a dedicated post burn review on it. And I do love the fragrance. It's in that fragrance family that a lot of us love and adore from Homeworks. This is Funnel Cake. So this is from their, uh, what is it, Carnival Collection. Fragrance notes on Funnel Cake are Vanilla Praline Cake, Golden Apple, Cinnamon Stick, Star Anise. This one has a pour date of December 5th, 2023. And this is in that family of hot cider donut. If you have smelled hot cider donut, if you have smelled sugared beignets, uh, what are the other ones? Harvest donut, um, 
sugared crepe. Uh, what is it? It was some type of crepe candle earlier this year. They are all siblings to each other. Um, this one maybe doesn't have as much of the apple note in this uh, candle. I actually really, really like this one. Uh, Funnel Cake is a candle that I could see myself repurchasing over and over again. This was a beast for me in terms of performance. It performed really well, burned cleanly. Strength and throw was very solid. I would give this one about a nine. Um, it wasn't headache inducing or cloying, but you could definitely smell it all throughout my open concept living area. Really great fragrance. And again, I really, I really like pairing this with like a lot of apple fragrances. It's a great transition from all of the summer fragrances into fall. Um, so yeah, this would be one that I would highly recommend and I would repurchase it um, in the future. All right, let's go ahead and talk about a Bath and Body Works candle that I still have one more in my backup stash. This is Hummingbird Tea Cake. This is one of my top 15 Bath and Body Works candles of all time. Fragrance notes here are pineapple cake batter, cinnamon spice, toasted pecans. I did purchase um, this candle for the first time at the beginning of this year when they launched it. And, oh. This is just so beautifully done. I love, love, love the scent. Now, the uh, the spice cake note that I pick up in here is very similar to the spice cake accord that they have in their um, sweet carrot cake candle that usually comes out comes out around Easter. I loved the packaging. The burn was great on this candle. Um, everything about it was just fantastic. And I love burning this one throughout the spring and the summer. Uh, I do pick up on some of that pineapple cake batter in here. It almost comes across like banana, but not Laffy Taffy banana. To my nose, it's definitely like a pineapple cake, the spice cake accord in there, and then maybe a little bit of nuttiness from the pecans. But this is just such a beautifully done candle. I'm glad that I have another one in my collection. I really enjoyed burning this with, um, uh, what's the other candle that I burned with? Country Candle Banana Bread, that limited edition summer launch. It burns really nicely with that candle, as well as Kringle Candles Fruit and Flakes. I really liked pairing it with that one. All right, we're making some progress here. Let's go ahead and talk about two country candles that are part of the new fall lineup. You guys, you might be surprised to see this because these two candles were, when I did my first cold sniff impressions, these two were the two that I ranked the lowest on cold sniff. And they ended up being some of my favorites, dare I say. I can't even believe I'm saying this, you guys. I actually think that I might, I am contemplating repurchasing one of these. So this is pine cones and pomander. This is not the one that I'm considering repurchasing, even though it was a lovely fragrance. The fragrance notes, oh darn, I can't see it on here because this is my label that kind of got messed up. All right, this to me is a juicy orange fragrance, but you do get a pine note very well balanced out in here. Um, a couple of people have asked me to compare this to the vintage pomander, which was Melanie, Mr. Kong's mom. Um, it was her collab candle last holiday season. This is not the same as vintage pomander. Do I think it's the same orange note? Yes, I do. But there's no clove in here, which is a spice note that I feel like is missing in order for it to be an authentic pomander type of fragrance. Pomander scents to me are a spiced orange type of scent. I don't get any spice from this. I definitely get like a pine tree with an orange note in this. Now this candle, when it first came in, all I could smell was the pine and it came across very astringent to me and kind of reminded me of cat urine. However, after I let it sit for a week because I went out of town right after I received these candles, I went out of town, I came back, and all I could smell was the citrus. When this candle is burning, it is a beautiful balance of both. I do have a dedicated review on it, and you can see that it still burned pretty cleanly all the way down. I did trim the wicks on these, um, and you know, like I said, by design of the jar, it is going to catch a little bit of soot, but I did really like this fragrance. Um, it paired really, really nicely with the other candle that you're going to see that it got pretty sooty there towards the end. White Birch and Rain. Now, this was the one that came in in last place on Cold Sniff, but I'm going to tell you, this one won me over. I don't know what's going on with me. I think maybe my fragrance preferences, not that they're changing, but I'm just finding myself enjoying candles that I never really thought that I enjoyed before and embracing them. You guys all know I've been on a kick with sweater weather uh, from Bath and Body Works and Kittens and Cashmere, those fresh kind of fresh fall fragrances. 
This one falls into that category, white birch and rain. We have fragrance notes here of herbal, cool, eucalyptus, lavender, musk, and mint. This to me, I had described as saying that this smells a lot like if you ever go camping, if you're ever out in, um, well, here on the West Coast, I would say, I don't know what the forests um, are comprised of back East or in the Midwest, but here in Arizona, in our forests, which half the state is actually high elevation forest, we have a lot of these aspen trees and ponderosa pine. And this fragrance to me smells like the very few times that I have gone camping and every time it's rained, this is what the forest smells like afterwards. It's fresh. It's, um, you do detect a little bit of lavender in here, but it's not like aromatherapy lavender. This is not a lavender candle. It's definitely, you get the tree note in here, the eucalyptus. Oh my goodness. I was loving this candle. Now you will see, I did, this I think might be a little bit my fault. I did leave this candle burning for like seven hours one day by accident. And I do notice that this sooting only tends to happen like once you get to about this level of the wax, if you leave the candle burning for too long, you are going to get some soot. The wicks on these did need some trimming. They did tend to get a little bit long um, and there was more carbon residue. Again, I think that might have to do with the fragrance oils that are used on this particular candle. Um, maybe they burn a little bit hotter. I don't know, but I surprisingly really like this fragrance. This one just made my home feel very, very clean. It was great for getting out any kind of cooking odors. Um, just maybe like freshen up the house if you feel like it's smelling kind of stale. Um, this was a great fragrance. I I honestly could see myself purchasing another one. Um, and that that is a shock because I did not like that one on cold sniff at all. And um, funny enough, if you caught my declutter, the number one candle, I actually ended up decluttering. I didn't like it upon burn. So just goes to show you, sometimes you need to light them up to form your full thoughts on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and include another candle that I was burning with that one is Palo Santo Spruce. This was from the QVC Christmas in July collaboration with Hallmarks. Fragrance notes here, Palo Santo, Blue Spruce, Fur Needles, Spiced Amber, Fragrance notes here, or I'm sorry, not fragrance notes, pour date of April 25th, 2024 on this candle. And again, this one burned all the way down. I did enjoy this fragrance. And I also said in my dedicated review on this candle that this to me, again, is not very much an exclusive holiday fragrance. I don't even really necessarily think of this being a Christmas fragrance. Now it can be. Yes, I smell the spruce in here. The Palo Santo note in here, I think kind of tones down the astringency that I typically pick up in a spruce note. Spruce of all of the tree notes is usually one that can like really hit my nose like cat urine a lot of the time. Spruce and just straight up pine usually don't don't mesh well for me. Um, but like I said, the Palo Santo note in here, I think tones that down. This performed really well for me because I got it in a duo. I do have another one in my collection. Um, this one was again, another one that I really enjoyed burning when I just wanted my house to smell fresh and clean and alive. Um, this was a great fragrance. I don't think that this one is still in stock over on QVC anymore, but, um, who knows, maybe it'll show up on the Slack & Co. website. I, I am an ambassador for that brand, but I haven't seen anything. We haven't seen anything teased for Christmas yet, um, only some fall and Halloween stuff. But yeah, this was a good candle for me and I, it performed quite well for me. And the last candle that I finished burning, um, this is Gingered Peach. This was also part of the Summer Reserve collection that was sent to me in PR. Fragrance notes here of peach, nectar, apricot, spice, sweet, cane sugar. Now, if you've been with my channel for any length of time, you guys know that my husband does not like peach fragrances. He actually was out of town for two weeks throughout the month of July. So I was able to get a lot of burns done while he was out of town. Um, this is a nice fragrance. Um, I ended up liking it a lot more upon burn than I did um, on cold sniff. On cold sniff, I definitely got more of that ginger note in here. This paired really nicely. If you have the Merlot candle in this reserve lineup, the two of them together give a very like autumnal vibe to it. The ginger peach in here is kind of what takes this from being just like your standard summery peach fragrance to more of what I would be, I would describe as a seasonal burner as a great seasonal or like a fall, bleh, summer to fall transitional fragrance because 
the ginger note in there ends a lends a little bit of spiciness to it that just makes your mind think, okay, we're kind of winding down summer. We're ready to get into more of those heavily spiced fall fragrances. So um, this one was was good for me. And again, another good performer. I did have to trim the wicks. We all know that Kringle received a lot of feedback on the, this reserve launch about the wicks, but it burned quite well for me, burned all the way down. It's not going to be a repurchase for me. Like I said, I typically will, um, I will try peach fragrances, but because my husband really does not like pe peach scents, I'm kind of limited in when I can burn them. So therefore I usually I usually don't repurchase a, per, a peach fragrance for my collection. So that is a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 candles I have finished burning. Um, I've got a lot of candles still in my rotation. I've got a lot of fragrances that I am burning, honestly, for review purposes right now, but I definitely see myself getting through um, another good chunk of them by the end of the month of August. So Feel free to chime in down below if you have purchased any of these candles, what your burn experience has been with them. Do you love Empty's videos? Do you guys feel really accomplished when you finish burning a candle? I know that I do. Um, again, I'm in a little bit of a different boat having this channel and reviewing new candles for all of you, but um, I don't know. I, I always feel pretty good when I finish burning a candle. I feel like and honestly, usually by the time I finish burning a candle, I'm honestly ready to kind of like move on to something different. Um, but yeah, I definitely, definitely feel a little bit of a sense of accomplishment here. So if you want to see what I finished burning at the end of this month, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. So that way you can see my end of the month candle empties. I also have a series here on my channel that I've been doing this year where I'm talking about my candle collection and just being very transparent with you about how many candles I currently have in my collection, if I've decluttered them, if I brought any new stuff in. And um, it's just kind of a fun little series that I do here to hold myself accountable. But if you're maybe looking for a little bit of an accountability community, um, we've got a lot of that going on when I post that video. So um, I do want to say thank you so very, very much for spending your time here with me today. YouTube should be suggesting another video for you to watch if you have more spare time. But if not, again, thanks for spending the time that you did have with me. Until my next one, I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day. Bye.